Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihe'i. I just came back from the Democratic Party convention in Philadelphia, and I hope that a bunch of you have been watching us on t television and might be a little interested in what was going on up there. I know I've gotten a lot of remarks about this speaker or that speaker, and I thought that today would be interesting if we took a little walk through the week and see, uh, see how things evolved. So I invited one of the youngest members of the Hawaii uh, delegation to the National Democratic Convention. His name is Jaron McCarthy, <laughs> and he is here with us today. And Jaron wasn't exactly a delegate. No, that's correct. I actually went up as staff to the delegation. Yeah, so you were the person who actually did the work. <laughs> you could say that. Yeah, yes. the delegates <laughs> sat in chairs and listened to speeches. You had to run around, make sure that, you know, all of that. Yeah. So you got what might be called an insider's look at the, uh, the National Convention. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why you're here today. <laughs> okay. Wow. But before we go on, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Jaron McCartney. I am a senior at Sonoma State University, political science major. And for the summer, I'm interning at the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii. Well, interning at the Chamber of Commerce, but what a, a lesson in political science <laughs> you just had this past yeah, week. Yeah, definitely. You got to see the ins and outs and definitely uh, got to take a lot in. Well, I, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but you, <laughs> you, you do... Um, you. Uh, you come from a, a line of politicians. Uh, I know. I, I, your, your dad yes, was yes. Uh, is Michael McCarthy, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. Who was a senator from the Windward side many mm -hmm. years on, mm -hmm. in the Hawaii State Senate, mm -hmm. and now is the chief of staff for uh, Governor Ike. Mm -hmm, correct. So you know a little bit about politics to start. With. Yeah, I hear things here and there, <laughs> little, little stories, but. Yeah, I still feel like an outsider in Hawaii politics, still trying to learn as much as I can. So this was a great opportunity to take Hang out with the delegation. Yeah, yeah right. definitely. Well, I, tell us a little bit about the delegation. 70% of the delegation were people who had supported uh, Senator Sanders. Mm -hmm. Yes. So about what, what was that? I mean, how many people would that be? Like about... Uh, that would be... So it was over 15 people, closer to 20, I would say. And the, uh, and the other group were those that had supported Senator Clint, uh, Secretary Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the final vote from Hawaii mm -hmm. was 19 members of the delegation voted for um, Senator Sanders. And if I'm correct, 15 voted for uh, uh, Secretary uh, Clinton. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was, uh, you know, the mixture of the delegation. Now, mm -hmm. what was it like to work for the, a mixed delegation like that? Uh, there were some tough times, but I mean, going into it, we knew that Hillary and or the Senator Sanders and the uh, Hillary delegates had some, had some differences that we needed to work out. But I think it was a great venue to work out those differences and... I think towards the end, you kind of saw them growing to become closer together after hearing all the speeches, after really listening to what Senator Sanders said. Um, I think unity in the party is uh, a reachable goal for sure. Now, now did you have uh, an affiliation yourself prior to going well, to the... I've been a Sanders supporter for over a year, but going into the election from over a year ago, I knew that no matter what, I would support the Democratic nominee. But what attracted you to Senator Sanders? Um, I knew he was a really progressive senator to begin with, but what really attracted me was his uh, stance on Citizens United. I mean, Hillary has the uh, same stance, but on Citizens United, he really makes it more of an uh, issue. Like, he makes it more, uh, how do I say, he just puts it out there for everybody to know more so than Hillary, I believe. And so for people who, who uh, may not be aware of what Citizens United was all about, that was a Supreme, United States Supreme Court decision mm -hmm. that allowed, uh, uh, removed any limitation mm -hmm. on the amount of dollars that could be spent uh, yes. in an election. So basically they said that money was speech and through the First Amendment, they, through the ruling, they said that 
you can spend any amount of money based on the First Amendment. And uh, why was that a particular concern to you? I just, that's what really got me into uh, politics. That was what got me interested. And I just don't think it's right that we can, that millionaires and billionaires can spend as much money as they want on elections. And uh, I mean, statistics show that money has, it plays a huge role in who wins an election. I think every president who spent more money has won an election. And I just think that it has to be more, uh, the politicians need to be catered more towards the people rather than the 1%, as Bernie would say. Oh, fantastic. Well, well um, was there any opposition to changing that rule at the uh, Democratic Convention? I believe, I believe it wasn't the platform. I don't know if it wasn't the platform or not, but I think all the Democrats kind of agree on that issue. On that issue. That was yeah. pretty universally mm -hmm. accepted. Okay, you were there, mm -hmm. and your, your job was to make all these delegates happy, right? Correct, correct. What does that involve? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, that involves having, well, we have a limited amount of passes to actually get into the convention. And so, you know, delegates bring spouses, friends, or just people maybe they don't even know that comes until the day of the convention. And so it's kind of, it's difficult to accommodate all the delegates, uh, I guess, requests when it comes to passes, because there's such a limited number of those. But um, other than that, I don't know, just serve Hawaii and just keep the delegates happy and make sure they get to where they need to be. And, um, well, just, did you make those little gift things that yeah, people are yeah. giving away to? So we, we put together the omiyage bags so that we could give to the other delegations to, you know, show our aloha to the other states. Yeah, I heard a, I heard a lot of people giving, I would say, lessons in, in omiyagi. <laughs> omiyagi. Okay, this is my omiyagi. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then you would have to explain to them what that was. You know? Yeah. Was uh, the, no, go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, I was going to say, was there anything particularly from Hawaii that was po popular with the other states? Oh, definitely. I mean, we had to put the macadamia nuts, the chocolates in there. But we also put in uh, the Live Aloha stickers to kind of explain to them or with the placard that uh, explains, like, what Live, Live Aloha really, like, stands for. And so I think that was kind of a special moment for us to kind of explain to them what, what it really means. Was that pretty much, would you say that uh, pretty much the delegation was committed to were committed to the idea of spreading aloha. Yeah, I believe so. As a as a whole, the delegation was definitely trying to uh, spread the aloha spirit. And uh, by the way, just out of curiosity, who taught up that uh, bumper sticker that said <laughs> "Live Aloha" on it? I believe my dad was a part of that, and so was uh, Robbie Alm. Robbie Alm actually was the one who gave us those stickers. Oh. So, yeah, it was so it's a little bit of your uh, heritage <laughs> running around the convention. <laughs> yeah. Right? And I, I'm assuming that because we were giving omiyagi, there were others that were giving the various delegates omiyagi as well, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay, so now the convention has started. Yeah. And you've got all these people, their passes and so forth. Um, tell me some of the high points from your point of view. I mean, did you have an op first of all, did you have an opportunity to actually go on the, del uh, on the convention floor and listen to um, the people that were making speeches and, and participating? Yeah, I felt really fortunate because going into the convention, I didn't expect to even go into the arena just because being staff, we don't have passes. But I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to sit on the floor for three out of the four nights. And so, yeah, I felt really lucky, really blessed, and just soaked it all in. But as far as the highlights go, I think, uh, you know, being a Punahou grad, I, uh, <laughs> Barack, that was the first time I ever saw Barack, and so that was really special for me. Just, yeah, just taking it all in, it was awesome. Did you hear Michelle's speech? Oh, yeah, Michelle, I mean, Michelle's speech was, yeah, it was awesome. I couldn't, there wasn't a better speaker, I thought, than Michelle. And uh, now you think your father spent his money wisely by sending you to the <laughs> whole <now>? I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> I think so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, Barack was up there. He gave a great speech, mm -hmm. as you know. He always does that. What about some of the other speakers? Yeah, the other one that hit home really hard was Joe Biden. It was really passion-filled, and I really, it really hit home with what he was saying. What, what about him that uh, excited you? Well, just the way he's just the way he spoke and his message about Trump and his, his line about, I forget what he said, but his line calling 
Trump's views on stuff. You know, he said, that's malarkey. I just, I <laughs> love that line. That was, <laughs> that was so great to hear. <laughs> that was a good night. It was, yeah, that was, was a great good night. night. And that was uh, President Obama. Did you have a chance to uh, see the, uh, the, the, the parents of the uh, Muslim soldier that was killed. No, that was the one night I didn't get to go onto the floor, but I was watching the, the speech from just outside the venue, and that was, that was a really touching speech. I wish I could have seen it live. But. Yeah, and then, as you know, there's been some recent controversy about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Donald Trump was saying something about it. And I don't know, from a young person's perspective, what what do you think about his remarks uh, regarding that grieving family? I think it's just like all his remarks. It's Malaki. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, Malaki is a good word for it. I mean, he's just nitpicking at things that aren't even. He's trying to find things like a needle in a haystack that's not even there. You know, he's. I don't know how to explain it. He's just. Now, there were a lot of young people at this convention. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, which, in my experience, is, was a new thing to have mm -hmm. that many young people. Did you have a chance to interact with some of your, uh, y you know, your colleagues? I got to interact a lot with the younger uh, Hawaii delegates, but not so much from other states because I was running around so much. But, yeah, the younger delegates uh, from Hawaii were equally enthusiastic about just being there and letting their voices be heard. And they were pretty passionate about oh, what they believed. In. Definitely passionate. They, they flew all the way to Philly and they knew they were going to somehow let their voices be heard. Now, most of them were uh, uh, Sanders delegates, right? Yeah, yes. And, most of them. and, you, and they, um, do you think that after they left the convention, they were as committed to doing something about the state of political affairs in America as they were when they landed there. Uh, yeah, I think when they left, I think they, they realized that, well, if you like, truly listen to what Bernie says, the revolution is, you could say it hasn't even started. Maybe it started right after the convention ended. And so that's, I think they, after listening so to So they're Bernie in it for the long haul. I believe so. There are a few maybe that are unfortunately maybe will not be in it for the long haul, but uh, overwhelmingly, I believe so. Yeah, I heard some, I heard some, uh, I heard a um, television commentator mm -hmm. make the comment that the, the thing about the left or the progressives is that they have this tendency to be very good from the outside, you know, challenging institutions, mm -hmm. but they aren't, they don't necessarily stick around. And whereas the, the thing about the right or the conservative, like the Tea Party people, mm -hmm. they continue and they win elections on the local level mm -hmm. and governorships and all of that. Uh, do you envision that the people who went there that were supporters, do you envision them continuing? Uh, is that what Bernie meant about the revolution continues? Uh, I, I, I it's, t it's hard to say, but I, I actually think they will stay because we see in elections now, there's, I don't know what people are calling them, Berniecrats, who are running for office now. And so I don't think we've seen that. I'm not sure, but I don't think we've seen that before. And so, I don't know. I think they had the opportunity to really listen to what Bernie was saying. And if they really took it to heart, which I think most of them did, they, they're going to be in it for the long haul. All right. Well, um, we're going to be back in a short time, and we want to follow up with you as to what happens post-convention. And so, at this time, we are going on a break. Hi, my name is Aaron Wills. You are watching ThinkTechHawaii.com. I am the host of the show, Rehabilitation, coming soon. You can catch us live on ThinkTechHawaii.com at 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. I will see you there. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We are uh, here live on Mondays at 3 p.m. and we bring guests like our best health coach, Elena Maganto. Uh, eat well and follow her tips. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha. I'm State Senator Russell Ruderman. I represent the Puna and Kau District on the Big Island and the host of Ruderman Roundtable. We're here on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. You can join us at thinktechhawaii.com. 
You can find a link there to, uh, to a page where you can see past episodes. And we talk here about good government, environmental issues, and issues of the day facing the state of Hawaii. I'm Russell Ruderman. Please join us for the Ruderman Roundtable. Mahalo. Where we go. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahe. Today we have with us one of the youngest members of the Hawaii delegation to the Democratic National Convention. It's the J Jared, Jaren, <laughs> yeah. Jaren McCarthy, who's, uh, he was there as a volunteer, right? Yes. A volunteer, and it was his job to make sure that everybody went to the right places, did the right things, and so forth. We were discussing the fact that um, yourself and a number of the younger members of the delegation were uh, Sanders supporters. Now, having gone through the whole uh, uh, convention, heard the speeches, you, he you heard the uh, speech from uh, Secretary Clinton, mm -hmm. the, who got nominated. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, are you, what is your, if you don't mind me asking, what are you intending to support the Democratic ticket and work for uh, Secretary Clinton? Yeah, definitely. I think we need to do all we can not to let Donald Trump win the election. And either way, I would have supported a Democratic nominee. But I think it was, I think it was really cool to hear uh, Hillary Clinton uh, mention Bernie in her speech uh, when she was talking about college tuition. And she even like mentioned Bernie's name, and uh, the really progressive platform that was laid out by all the Democrats. That was, that was pretty I cool could, to hear. I think that you would be interested. <laughs> I mean, I suspect that you would be interested in what what the, Demo uh, what the what's being done about college tuition. <laughs> but I want to assure you, your dad and mom are probably just as interested <laughs> as you are. Yeah, I'm not, I wouldn't <laughs> be surprised. <laughs> so what what happens now? I mean, what do, what do you do now? You uh, we we come home. Mm -hmm. uh, we pick up the pieces, and uh, I guess we start campaigning. Do you think that, for the most part, uh, the other young people from the delegation will get involved in the campaign as well? I believe so. Not only because of Trump, but because I think they truly believe that uh, the revolution, the best way to, to keep the revolution going, because Bernie was just like the kindle to the fire. It was only just the start. But the best way to keep the revolution going is through, now, uh, through electing Hillary Clinton. And by the way, just for those that may not have known this, act Bernie actually came to the hotel where the Hawaii delegation was staying and spoke uh, to the delegation, well, mm -hmm. not only ours, but a number yeah. of delegations uh, at, uh, at the hotel. Yeah, so we were staying with the delegates from North Dakota, South Dakota, Idaho, West Virginia, and Utah. And it just so happened that Thursday, uh, with all the other chairs, we decided that Thursday would be Hawaii Day. And so we did the Hawaiian doxology before breakfast. We had Governor Ige speak, and we sang. I already Hawaii. did a great speech. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. We got the crowd going, and everybody was cheering for him. It was really cool to watch. But yeah, we did a bunch of things to put the Hawaii touch on the breakfast. And it just so happened that we were able to get Bernie Sanders to come and speak uh, to the delegates. And so. So yeah. that must have been pretty fun. I mean, did, did you get a chance to, like, shake his hand? And no, I didn't get a chance to shake, shake his hand because there's so much security, and they knew he kind of jetted out of there because he knew people were probably going to mob him. But yeah, but it, I got to sit right up close and hear him speak. And uh, also who came to speak on Hawaii Day was uh, Martin O'Malley, which was really cool. Yeah, Martin O'Malley was the former governor of uh, Pennsylvania. Yes, I think so. I believe so. Yeah, Pens was it Pennsylvania? Yeah, I think so. Oh, Maryland. I'm sorry. No, yeah, yeah. Maryland. Yeah, yeah. He was a former, and actually, uh, a can, uh, one of the early candidates yeah, in the he was in the top three. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He and uh, Senator Sanders and uh, Secretary Clinton. Mm -hmm. So, it, so this that must have been a high point of the of, of, yeah. the, of the session. Definitely, because you know, just seeing Bernie up close, that was the first time I ever got to see him speak. And I mean, Martin O'Malley's speech was equally as Ryle, uh, got me equally riled up because of what, what his message was about not, not letting Trump win the office and keeping the revolution going. Well, that sounds great. Now, that, would you consider that one of the high points of the... Yeah, for me it definitely was. There was a low point as well, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, we people in Hawaii saw the picture, mm -hmm. and, and that was uh, Probably one of the low points of the deal. What 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 do you think of all of that? A moment when 
here we are standing as a delegation for Hawaii, uh, saying the votes, and somebody makes a gesture, that an inappropriate gesture, uh, that apparently made its way around the world. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just really unfortunate. I mean, I no way sympathize with her, but at the same time, you know, all the Bernie people, they're, they're hurting right now. Um, they put their heart and soul into this campaign, you know, 110%, and the fact that he didn't get the nomination is tough, but, I mean, that's politics. Somebody wins and somebody loses. So it was just a really unfortunate event, and it... It, it didn't last that long, did yeah. it? I mean, it was like most people didn't even know it had occurred. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, was actually, standing, I was standing maybe 10 feet behind her, and I had no idea that it happened. And I was standing in right in front yeah. of her, and I had no idea it happened. In fact, it seemed like more people back home saw it than, yeah, than in true, the yeah. delegation. Mm -hmm. And I know that she has, uh, you know, sent, and uh, steps were taken to make sure that at least uh, the feeling of the delegation was expressed. But except for that incident, I cannot think of anything that mm -hmm. uh, would have marred the uh, the whole experience. Yeah, it's, I mean, it was an unfortunate event, but. In no way does it represent the Hawaii delegation, I believe. And, you know, we, I think we did a good job of emitting our aloha, aloha spirit to all the other states. And so, yeah. And then you have that, and then beautiful, uh, <laughs> all those flowers. Yeah, that was uh, Florence Conkey's idea. That was, I was just there to help, but that <laughs> was, I think that was an excellent touch. Yeah, to everybody could see the flowers, and for the most part, most of, a, most of us wore uh, Aloha shirts yeah. in the daytime. A massive amount of people came and talked to us about the flowers, which is really nice. And there was these great little buttons, I remember people were handing out saying, Barack Obama, made in Hawaii, you know, <laughs> yeah. wasn't that great? Yeah, it was yeah. great, yeah. So, uh, uh, would you say that it's an experience that every young pr person ought to try and... Uh, yeah, definitely. I know it's, I was just so fortunate to be able to go. And if anybody gets the chance to go to a convention, it's really tiring, it's exhausting, the days are long, but it's definitely worth the experience. And your favorite speaker was Barack. Yeah, I would have to say so. Okay, great. <laughs> and uh, let me ask you, um, so now uh, you're home now, mm -hmm. you're back. Mm -hmm. Are uh, you going to go to college? Yes. And uh, you're going to try and pick up some of this, uh, well, you're going to go to finish off college. Mm -hmm. again. And um, are you um, intending to sort of pick up where all of this left off and continue being a political activist of some kind? Yeah, I'm going to try and do my best to balance schoolwork and try and get Hillary Clinton into the Oval Office because I just, we just can't allow Trump to get anywhere near the White House. And what about Jaron McCarthy? Oh, Bryson. What, oh, no. <laughs> you, what do you, what do you uh, is there a politics in your... Uh... Um, well, for me, I'm just... I know right your now. brother. Okay, <laughs> your brother Bryson is... Uh, that's another McCarthy. He's there two of you running mm -hmm. around. But yeah. well, what about you? What are you going to... Um, well, I'm just trying to learn right now, like I said. Just trying to keep learning, keep growing. And right now, I don't know if I have too much to offer, but maybe in the future, if I have something to offer the great state of Hawaii, then I would love to help out any way I could. And if that means running for office, then that means running for office. But if not... Fantastic. <laughs> so, the, I mean, absolutely. Is there anything in particular that, um, that you learned from this convention that you want to share it with others? I mean, it doesn't even have to be, you know, for this person or that person or relating, but, well, you know, anything. Um, well, I got to kind of shadow around with Flo Conkey. Who and Flo Conkey was the chief page for yeah, the... Yeah, she was, she was pretty much the acting executive director. And, I don't know, I learned a pretty deep lesson from her. It was just, just do the right thing. And if you always do the right thing, things kind of just fall together and come into place, even if you don't see it at first. She did an amazing job. Oh, yeah. You know, she they, they both. She, uh, she and Heather Murakami, mm -hmm. I guess, and yourself. And Jane Sugimura as and well. And Jane Sugimura yeah. with the... Uh, ben Schaefer. Yeah. Ben Schaefer with the staffers. Mm -hmm. And you had to put up with at least 35 eagles. <laughs> so yeah, that must have been a trip. No, it was, it was good, though. It was good. I just try to work hard and do a, represent Hawaii well. Well, you know, I want to tell the people in the audience that they can call 
and have any questions that you might have for for Jaron, <laughs> and you can call in on 415-871-2474. 415-871-2474. So, what happens now, Jaron? <laughs> what happens now is just keep the revolution going. Hopefully that's the idea. Well, do, I mean, do you, uh, and I am interested in that. I mean, do, is there like a time when you all going to meet or... Is it sort of um, looser, or how, how does this all, how does it all work? Um, you know what, I'm not too sure, but I guess the, be the most, uh, more organized we can be, the better. But I think right now, the most important thing for the Bernie supporters is just for them to, to heal and yeah. to... And to get involved, yeah. and to stay involved. Kind of accept the fact that Hillary is a nomination, which is going to be tough. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about the Bernie or Buff people or Bus people? Is there? <laughs> I think Sarah Silverman said it best. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't she great? She was awesome. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. For those of you that missed it, Sarah, Pe uh, Sarah Silverman mm -hmm. stated. She said, uh, I, "I can't say it as good as her. You know, she <laughs> just did well." But it's basically, where you, it, you know, if you get you carry on too much, it gets ridiculous, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, there's danger in allowing Trump to win the office. Well, and by, you know, by working against or by not voting or going with the Green Party, you're, you're basically, I don't know, you're working against Hillary, which is, in my mind, pretty dangerous. Well, Jared, I want to thank you so much for <laughs> joining me today. I, and I hope the audience out there, you've got a sense of uh, the good hands Hawaii <laughs> are, you know, Hawaii is in for the future. Young people participating in the political process. I mean, it's always exciting to me, and I hope it is as interesting for you as well. So thank you for joining Talk Story with John Wahey. And thank you very Thanks much, Jared. <laughs>